Okay, so I know I talked a lot about rape already, and I was certain that my second and third episode of Meanwhile in Sweden covered all the absurdity there is to cover surrounding Sweden's legislation on rape. But then, the most amazing thing happened. Sweden actually managed to go further than full retard. I, I guess we should call this phenomenon full sweetheart. Because this case might be the most absurd one yet. Yes, even more absurd than the guy who was raping a woman as she was dying and then only got deported for 10 years because of his crimes. I gotta tell you, the amazing thing about living in a progressive country is that you never cease being surprised. So, check this one out. Mohammed is 21 years old. He arrived in Sweden in 2010 and sought asylum, claiming to be a refugee child. Now, already at that point, there's reason to be suspicious, since Norway proved a few years ago that 9 out of 10 unaccompanied refugee children are actually well above 18. Mohammed's application was denied, and instead of respecting the country's decision, he decided to remain in Sweden as an illegal immigrant until the case was prescribed so he could seek asylum yet again. This isn't anything weird. Since 2011, 54,000 people have refused to leave Sweden after having their asylum application denied. In 2013, he raped a 14-year-old girl in a parking lot after getting her drunk. The court sentenced him to two years and six months for rape in the first degree. The court also decided that he should be deported for 10 years. While in prison, he applied for a residence permit yet again, but now he had converted to Christianity, and because of that they gave him a permanent residence permit because he is at risk for persecution in his home country of Afghanistan. Since he is a Christian minority figure now, it doesn't matter that he's a deranged child rapist who's committed severe sex crimes because the court finds his sex crimes aren't serious enough to subject him to the risk of persecution in his home country. <laughs> Yeah. You gotta give this Arab rapist credit. <laughs> he played the Swedish system excellently. He took the Swedes' tolerance for diversity and turned it on itself. When Mohammed was asked by the migration board what he was thinking when he converted to a religion that could put him at risk in his home country, he said that he wasn't thinking at all. While his new asylum application was being investigated, he couldn't even answer the most basic elementary questions about Christianity, and yet they think that this guy is credible. Meanwhile, they want to deport this immigrant. This is actually a follower of mine, we've kept in touch over the past months on Facebook. He's from Singapore, he has lived in Sweden for 7 years and started paying taxes from the moment he got here. A hard-working dude who taught himself the Swedish language immediately, all by himself. He is an elected politician in the town where he lives, and his day job is teaching other immigrants Swedish and helping them integrate. This guy is the model immigrant. If all immigrants were like him, everyone would love immigration. And the migration board want to deport him. This is Swedish immigration policy in a nutshell, because these aren't isolated incidents. This is a trend. Criminal immigrants rarely get deported, whereas there's been numerous cases where well-integrated people who have been living here for years, who are working, who have a family here, who have no criminal record, are thrown out for no reason. Our authorities even want to deport young girls at risk for being married off to some old pedophile in their home country. This 23-year-old foreigner beat the shit out of a senior citizen couple in a parking lot. The 78-year-old woman of the couple ended up dying. He punched her in the face, she fell to the ground and hurt her head so badly from the fall that she deceased. The foreigner was sentenced to 1 year and 10 months and didn't get deported. This foreigner has lived in Sweden for 8 years. He has a family here and works as a car mechanic. They want to deport him to ISIS-controlled territory in Iraq, Mosul to be more exact. For years we have been told by the media, by the celebrities, by the politicians, that immigration is profitable for Sweden in the long run. If our current immigration policy is supposed to be profitable, why are we deporting immigrants who actually work? Are you aware that criminal immigrants cost society millions? 
Just having a police hearing costs several thousands. How is that profitable to Sweden? According to the statistics, after seven years in Sweden, only about half of immigrants have jobs. This applies to both refugees and immigrants. And the majority of all welfare is going to immigrants. So keeping reality in mind, maybe we should try to keep as many integrated workers as possible. The one key word to describe Sweden's immigration policy is irresponsible. Case workers at the migration board were interviewed and said that if you lack ID papers, it doesn't affect your asylum application negatively. Even people who have fake ID papers don't face greater risk of being denied asylum. Refugees from Eritrea and Syria get their applications granted in the majority of cases, even if they don't have passports in the majority of cases. The migration board even hands out asylum permits to so-called refugees who have double citizenships and who have lived in other countries than Syria the past years. Clearly, these are people who are economical migrants looking to upgrade their living standard and not actual asylum refugees. And a caseworker says flat out that the way the system is set up right now makes it impossible to grant asylum to those who actually have valid reasons for asylum. The caseworker's mission is to accept as many immigrants as possible, not to do it as properly as possible. When a migration board worker starts up their work computer, a message pops up reminding them of the migration board's vision and orientation, which is to view migration as a positive force contributing to make our country richer both financially and culturally. In other words, a ridiculous multicultural ideology is the reason for this insane sloppiness. In another article written by a former caseworker at the migration board, he echoes this sentiment. He says it's far too easy to enter Sweden as a terrorist because the caseworkers don't have any time to do proper checks on those who are seeking asylum. The work principle is the more the merrier. Employees are encouraged to hand in at least three finished cases per week. Their salary and duration of employment depends on the number of finished asylum cases they hand in. Therefore, even if you suspect someone of being a terrorist, you don't have time to investigate. You have to choose between keeping your job and doing a good job. Sweden makes no distinction between honest asylum seekers and luxury seekers. Sweden makes no distinction between hard-working immigrants and criminals. Put simply, Sweden makes no distinction between good immigrants and bad immigrants. And then they wonder why racism in Swedish society is increasing. The only natural thing to become with a system like this is really fucking mad. And nobody can blame you for making racist comments when you see news like this. You should be mad. You should be over the top fueled by hatred. But not towards immigrants. See, immigrants don't abuse the system. They simply use the system. And the system is put in place by politicians. There's always going to be rapists and scumbags around. But our leaders are supposed to protect us from that. You can't ask the rapists and scumbags themselves to protect us from them. Thus, politicians are the ones you should direct your anger towards because they have failed us, both the left wing and the right wing, because neither of these have done enough to prevent a ridiculous system such as the one we have now.